special places, you know. Actually, there's five new scams out. Okay, that's what I was saying. If you get an email from PayPal, don't go to the email. Don't answer it. Go to PayPal. Contact customer service. They're going to tell you where to forward that email from. They now have a fraud department on that. But, Lily, that's been going on for thousands of years. It's just technology has made it easier. See, that's what I'm saying. If somebody wants to do evil, they're going to find a way of doing it. Against a person, against a charge card, against their bank account. I went in the hospital. I'm in the hospital for four days. I come out. Then I got to go back in because of something somebody put up on YouTube here. Do you know that that morning, the first morning I went in, I made an order with Team U. I come home and I have four big old bags of stuff. I don't know where they came from. I didn't order that much. And then I checked my bank account. On Team U, it leaves it open for 24 or 48 hours just in case you want to add to it. And what somebody, a troll, somebody got into my Team U account. PayPal didn't know the difference. I didn't know that I was in the hospital. I didn't have my phone. And I don't have PayPal on my phone, just on my computer. And what they did is they added all this stuff, which charged my account with it. So when I found out, I got with the bank account, closed the account, and got a new account. Got with PayPal, got with Timu, and there was a fraud investigation put out. That's how easy it is to get you to have to pay more money. People don't care. Do you know it only costs you $1.99? Well, same thing with Amazon. 80% of Amazon is from that way. Almost every company you order from is from that way. Or Korea or whatever. 80% of what we buy, unless it's stamped made in the USA, it's not from the USA. Stop and think. If it's stamped USA, it's American made. People don't want to pay those prices. Yeah. What do you think if you go to call Facebook to get some information and help, who do you think answers the telephone? Well, I have some ordered. Everything of mine is going to be stamped or ordered with my name on it. Made in the USA. And I sell it pretty cheap. Because I know people can't afford. They won't, but they can't afford. Do you know they make over a thousand of these a day? A thousand of one print a day. But we can do the same thing at home. But it just takes us a little bit longer. We don't have the machine. It's not been programmed to put, you know, to print it out, to put the glue on it. And they have big old containers of these rhinestones. They do like this. Um, a person has to do like this, put in the Ziploc bag and seal it. Let's see if I can find it. And it'll show you how they make these rhinestones on here. Y'all find it kind of interesting. Let me look real quick. Sorry, everybody. Okay, how do they make the rhinestones? And this is just the little one. And they are plastic. And there's all kinds of little things, how they make them and store them. Let me do the first one. 
how to make rhinestones, the little plastic gems. Okay, this has a short URL, so I'm going to put it up here so y'all can just look at it later. But that's how they do it right there. Um, and it's like, oh, my God, look at all that. Then they dye them, and it's a big old machine. But it's humans that are running the machines. And they show in all, that's one type. Let's see. Um, here's another one. Now, this is the one I've seen. And sometimes we get the rhinestones. And they're um, upside down. The colored parts are on the bottom where it should be on the top. And this goes to show you on both of them. So that's something y'all can just look at just to see, especially those that likes to do this. Now, when I was doing candles, I had a thing. You poured the wax and then you took one like this. You take it off. Well, now I use those for my epoxy and I'll rub it. You'll see me rubbing it across with the popsicle stick. That's to get it to where everything's in the groove and not on top. Yet we still have to clean it. But yeah. I stopped buying from anything from Peru. Because they got too many children factories. And every factory in China does have children working for them. In Japan. In Korea. And people said that's not fair. The, the problem with that is. Children has to work to help not only the economy, but their family to help feed the family and stuff. What they're doing is wrong. I am against, completely against child labor. But stop and think, people. Is China the first one to use child labor? Go back 200 years. Children would get up. My grand, my daddy and them did. They got up before the sun got up with lanterns, went in the cotton fields and picked cotton. Then they come in and eat breakfast. Then they went to school. When they came back, they went outside, picked more cotton. Today, that would be called child labor. Back then, it was a way of life. I don't condone it. And uh, Jane Fonda and a lot of the movie stars has in Mexico and South America and China factories. And we're buying their goods thinking they're made in the USA and they're not. But yet we're wearing their designer clothes. I'm not. But people are wearing their designer clothes. Oh, this is so-and-so. She designed it. She might have designed it, but her factory is using labor. You know, there have been a lot of manufacturers that does this. A lot of people has died because there's not enough. In yeah, you didn't know that? Oh, my God. That was a big stink years ago. Yeah, children needs to be in school. Now, they do put them in school so many hours, but then they're like two hours in school, then they have to work two hours. Two hours in school. <coughs> Is it that they have to work? Yes, to help provide for their families, especially in India. <coughs> Why do you think so many children grow up to be scammers? from those countries. They don't want to work in the factories. A lot of factories, even in the USA, women that were sewing clothes, like the t-shirt factory and all that caught fire. Almost every woman died in there. There's not enough emergency exits. There's not enough cooling fans. No fire extinguishers, nothing. 
I was watching some a movie, a cop show, and they said, boy, it looks like this garage is big, but we saw people coming in here. Where are they? Well, when you would walk in the garage, they had a sensor and a light, red light would go on in another part of the garage. They had put up fake walls, extended it, and they'd stop all the machines. And they'd wait for the signal to go back on to start working again. One of the cops says, put his hand against the wall, said, wait a minute, that's a fake wall. And they moved it, and they had 20 people back there working with machines and stuff and they were all quiet they had their hands over their mouths so they wouldn't make any sound for the cops to catch them it's going on all over the world see we really don't unless you start looking at some of these things you don't know what's going on in your own neighborhood I do because I've been living here long enough. I know which house to trust and which not to trust. And if you see my shorts down the street, those are the ones that there's four or five of them living in the house. They get to guzzling and stuff. We've heard gunfires and everything out here. Animal control comes out here every day, but not for us. They check two streets from us and they make the block. Then they'll go back again three or four times, different times of the day. Because they've been stealing the big dogs. That's why we're very protective about our dogs at night. That's when they come and steal them. If we go somewhere, we put her in the house if it's for a couple of hours. If not, we put her at the vet. We're not going to let our dogs be stolen for the fights. And they've broken up I don't know how many. One night we heard a big old boom. The eagle, illegal stuff are being made. That's the part of the city we live in. Do I want to live here? Heck no. I don't want to live here. I have no choice. I made a promise to EJ. As long as he needs me to help him with anything. And Wolf yesterday got a phone call from him. He has the place where my gift shop was further down. Um, what happened was a lady tried to sue me for something that wasn't even my product. So EJ took it and turned it into an LLC in 2008. But the shop was still mine. He just protected me. But down at the shop, it was horrible. They finally, he finally took the building away and they had a sewage thing. They put a fence around it so nobody would fall in it and stuff. City, and we've been telling them for two years, you need to put dirt there. He put one load of dirt. He needs like five loads of dirt. City finally got with them, said, if you don't finish, welcome back, mama. If you don't finish putting dirt there and take that fence down, we're going to fine you. Oh, then it was going to hit his pocketbook. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you have to threaten him to get anything done, just like his roach problem. Until the trolls had him investigated by adult protection services thinking, I was causing all this, which I wasn't. I couldn't do nothing about it. He's still working part-time. He's got his driver's license. He drives his car. He goes to church. I can't do anything. And my name is not on his bank accounts. Now, if something happened to him, the bank does have a copy of my power of attorney where I can at least write his bills out or whatever. And... Uh, but their innovation, I want to thank y'all for it because they said he had to have his house clean, and he did. So there's no roaches over there no more. And you can ask Mama. She's seen it. We never had a roach here. Never. But over there, one day he came through the house, and a roach fell off. I ran. I sprayed it, and I stomped it. I said, get out of here. If you can't come in with clean clothes, 
do not come in here at all. And this is his, his property. But he understood, but he still didn't do anything until adult protection services went out and said, well, you're, you're bathing, you're doing your own stuff, you're washing your own clothes, you're working. We can't do anything, but I can call the Board of Health about the roaches. Now, we called the Board of Health many times. But guess what? They wouldn't do anything about it. Yeah, you know, that's what you do. But him, he had rats. He had to get the cage, put them out. He caught them. We sent them way out in the country. One day he calls. No, Wolf goes over there to check on his air conditioner or something. He called us. And he heard something between the kitchen cabinet and the kitchen stove where Elton had put the cage. There was a possum in there. Now, how in the heck did that possum get in his house without him knowing it or without the dog barking? Or So, Wolf, when he got home, they drove it way out in the country. They let it go. And we're in the middle of the city and there's coyotes here because what's happening is people's building further south where they would be at, they're moving into the city, especially since the hurricane. There wasn't as much food and stuff like that. They're moving into the city and they're catching them and they're taking them out. And I hate to see that with animals. That's why we try to rescue as many animals as we can. Well, when I lived on the other side in 98, I lived on the other side of my street. I lived behind the gift shop and all that over there. Two houses down, they had two ladies, 90 cats. Kept about 30 in the house, but let the others go run raw free. At night, they get up and there was a little opening they got up in my attic. I couldn't sleep. So I called the animal control. And they gave me a trap. I set it out the next morning. I go to see, oh, I got four or five of their cats. And they come pick them up. They called the ladies. Say, hey, we got your cats here. They're tagged. But they're not fixed. We're going to fix them. And then you can come pick them back up. So after about three weeks, they were coming before I got up and they would leave, let the cats out. Okay. So they finally came out and said, hey, we're neutering and spading all the cats if you want them. And they started counting, found out there was 90 of them. They left them with 10 cats and took the cats to an animal shelter where other people could adopt them and stuff. 90 cats for two women. We were tired. We had cats fighting up underneath the house and everything. One day I put out a trap for a possum. They come up underneath the house and get between. It's an old, old building. Had a wooden, then it, it had a wooden wall, then a space. A wooden wall, and then they had lap side and outside. Well, inside, if you went into the closet and took down the panel, it was lap side and again. You would have to go like through three wooden things. I was taking a bath one night, and I was just relaxing. I could hear. I went, what in the heck is that? Oh, they fed them every day. They kept it, but a lot of them was pregnant. A lot of the cats was pregnant again. But I could hear that noise. The possum had gotten up between those two things of the board, between the garage and my bathroom where my tub was at. And it was sleeping during the day. So I put a can of tuna fish and a can of chicken. And I put it in a cage where it was coming in. It. I caught it. I didn't kill it. I called animal control. They said, well, what you want us to do about it? I said, well, you can come get it. And they said, uh, just take it out to the country. That thing was so mean. The neighbor 
the man next to us took it out in the country. Now, I don't know what he did with it, but he brought the cage back and it had blood on it. I never called him again. A few nights later, my big dog, we had a five-foot fence or six-foot fence. Yeah, six-foot fence, hurricane fence outside. I could hear my dog barking and screaming and hollering. I went out there and there was a possum out there on the top of the fence. The dog couldn't get to it, but it was so scared or it was playing dead, one of the two. The neighbor's man came out there. I heard, pew, pew. I looked around. He had a BB gun he was shooting the possum with. It finally let go of the fence and he took it away. He said, that thing tore up my screen. It got in our bedroom. It peed all over our brand new bed. Those things needs to get out of here. And the animal control will pick them up. They'll kill them. But now they won't pick them up. You got to destroy them or take them way out in the country. And that's what we do. We take them way out in the country. We don't kill animals if we don't have to. We're not that kind of people. I didn't need Lucy Lou. We had two dogs, a small one and a large. The front door we'd hurt. And, and I couldn't think of what it was. I thought it was Snow White because that's what she normally does when she dreams. So I went to the door and opened up. It was cold. You know how you can see this? You can do this over the ribs and you can feel the skin right here. Her skin was between the ribs and down up underneath the ribs. We called her in, and I tried finding her who owned her. Nobody wanted her. We kept her. Yeah. <laughs> Raccoons will, too. They're even worse than possums. But the thing is, they carry salmonella, you know, and other diseases. But does that mean they have to be killed? No. Take them somewhere. That's right. The good Lord knew we would take her in. Brought her in and something told me to ask her if her name was Lucy Lou. And I asked very gently, are you Lucy Lou? All of a sudden she perked up. She was almost dead. She perked up and her tail started wagging. I said, well, that's it. So Wolf gave her. Five times more than what we give two eyes in one sitting. She ate and ate. We just let her eat. If she would have gotten sick, she could have thrown up. We would have. She never threw up. She was in her last probably hour of life. And look at her. Y'all seen her last night on here? She's 11. To, she's got to get a scratch from me when she goes outside. She's got to get a scratch from me. At night, then when I go to bed at night, I scratch her again. She loves back scratches. Two Eyes is the only one we let loose all night long. He's kind of like a guard dog. Uh, Lucy is too much a, still a puppy at two years old being trained. Uh, I think she tear every box and every piece of paper in the house up. Now, Snow White, you don't hear much from her unless... Lucy comes in the house or somebody comes to the door. Have you heard a dog barking? No. She has no teeth. And I told the cop last night, come on in. She kind of hesitated. I said, she has no teeth. <laughs> she don't bite. She just barks. And I tell you what, Snow White being her age and a little, she will tell Lucy Luke, this is my house. You better not come around me and she's here's this big old dog here and here's this little old dog here and she rah, 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 all the way until lucy is put in her cage lucy lou was probably twice the size of snow white when she came to our door all our dogs likes each other snow white just wants to say okay i'm queen of the hill here you know Yeah, I found that out. I found that out. And it was fu funny. Um, my distance cousin, the son had breeded one of his chihuahuas, came out with Snow White. Nobody ever wanted her. So his sister wanted it. 
went to work and she would bark all the time. The landlord said, you got to get rid of her. So her mother took her. She said, that damn thing barks constantly all day long until she's hoarse. We're going to take her out and Kevin's going to put her out in the woods and whatever happens. Happen. I said, no, you're not. Bring her to me. So she, she drove 30 something minutes to bring her to me. I held her. She was a year old for three days on and off. I held her never barked not once till my ex-husband walked in the door without knocking. <laughs> she went, then she started barking. Now, anybody that comes in the door, she'll bark. And like I said, when Lucy comes in, but other than that, you don't hear her barking. 